We are currently living in the golden age of independent animation. The accessibility of modern technology has paved the way for some truly creative pilots. The amazing digital circus, has been Hotel, even Monkey Wrench. But there's one indie cartoon that tends to fly under the radar. Did you even know it got a second season? Bee and Puppy Cat is a 2013 slice of life workplace comedy in space. It follows Bee, an eccentric young woman struggling to pay her rent. One day, an alien named Puppy Cat falls onto her lap. He makes her an offer, become his work partner in the intergalactic gig economy, and in exchange, take a share of his earnings. In no time, they become solid buddies. Meanwhile, Puppy Cat is being hunted by dark aliens. If Bee uncovers the truth, he fears he'll lose his best friend. On top of that, Bee's hometown is bursting with his own brand of weirdness. Will Bee and Puppy Cat be able to keep their friendship intact? It's undeniable that Bee and Puppy Cat is full of charm. It has great art direction and memorable characters. Bee and Puppy Cat started out as a successful Kickstarter pilot back in 2013. The first season got good word of mouth and led to the creation of a second season. That second outing, known as Lazy in Space, made its way to Netflix in 2022 and let me tell you, it's vastly different. What happened in all that time? Did it lose that independent charm from its inception? That's where I step in. Today is my 25th birthday. I wanted to cover one of the most unique cartoons I've ever seen. I liked the first season well enough, but season 2 is far more ambitious with its storytelling. Let's shed some light on season 2 of Bee and Puppy Cat. Full spoilers ahead. You took too long. Now your candy's gone. You go. <laughs> Lazy in Space follows a semi-episodic structure. Our protagonists do some mundane activity on Earth. It can range from celebrating a neighbor's birthday, simping for the town mayor, or paying a visit to your ex-boss. But they realize they gotta pay the bills. With his advanced alien technology, Puppy Cat teleports himself and B to space for gigs, I mean assignments. Bird and Cat Dog are members of Temp Space an agency that offers dangerous Fiverr jobs from across the universe. These assignments include visiting a cat bathhouse, baking magic donuts, or opening a giant soda can. You take what you can get when you're a talking cat, a uh, dog. B meets weird aliens on equally weird planets. The duo hits a snag, but with B's advanced problem solving skills, they earn that paycheck. The episode ends with Team B resolving whatever squabbles they had back on Earth. That's the basic gist of Lazy in Space. On the surface, it's a subdued comedy that tackles the challenges of being a working age adult. Kinda like that Fiona and Kate cartoon, minus the existential dread. But underneath the beautiful colors and trippy alien magic, it's a show about tragedy, betrayal, and learning to take responsibility for oneself. Let's go over our principal characters. B is a cheery yet impulsive woman in her early 20s. She's not your typical working adult protagonist. She can't hold down a human job for more than a few days. She sucks at most of them. With Puppy Cat at her side, she excels at adapting to any curveballs thrown in temp space. She's strong, knows how to deal with dangerous foes, and can easily communicate with her alien clients. But back on Earth, her social life is a little more complicated. At the start of Season 2, B holds a crush on her neighbor, Deckard Wizard. Get it? Deckard, like a deck of cards? Yeah, his parents were huge nerds of Dungeons and Dragons. Deckard is a nervous wreck who wants to go to cooking school. The problem? His baking stinks. He ain't no Remy from Ratatouille. Deckard and B are good friends, but their feelings for one another are a little complicated. B has a crush on the guy, but she pushes him to pursue his dreams. On the other hand, Deckard doesn't think he's good enough. He thinks he's never going to improve as a chef. One day, he starts recognizing Bee's more outlandish qualities. Her bones are unusually heavy. She powers up an abandoned arcade with just her lips, and she can understand Puppy Cat's techno speak just fine. By the way, Deckard and his human neighbors can't comprehend what PC is saying. Wow, you make cute sounds for a baby. That begs the question. Does B have a cybernetic implant or something? Anyway, B accidentally brings Deckard to temp space. It goes as well as you would expect. 
What is happening? Where are we? What's going on? Are we dead? Deckard, it's okay. B gives Deckard the ropes and helps him with baking giant space donuts. He's getting the hang of it and he's feeling more comfortable with his skills. But then out of nowhere, a pair of evil alien arms come for B's life. B activates defense mode and pulls a chaos blast. Deckard's like, whoa, she's a cyborg. She saved my life. You know, pursuing my baking diploma isn't so bad now that I think about it. Why exactly is B a super powered cyborg? We'll get back to that. While B can be caring and somewhat outgoing, she's a walking enigma to her neighbors. She knows this for a fact, but she prefers to distract her worries through busy work. B has the emotional maturity of a 12 year old despite being of college age. She can be lazy and somewhat pushy to her guy friends. Throughout Lazy in Space, B learns to accept responsibility for not only her actions, but for the well-being of her somewhat depressed friends. This applies to B's cat dog roommate. Puppy Cat is a young alien man with a temper. He loves bossing people around, but is immensely limited by his Clefairy-like body. Unlike B, Puppy Cat is self-centered, a little cynical, and wastes no time making that money. Puppy Cat's voice is provided by Vocaloid software. Oh my gosh, a gift! You love me. Yes. I love this purse! Yes! Do you have any photos left over? I can put it in my new purse. Yes! All around, he's a simple guy. Yet, deep down, PC is grappling with the mistakes of his past life. Prior to meeting B, Puppy Cat was a space mercenary. He became rich doing bounty missions, but he made a ton of enemies. One day, he fell in love with a space princess. He agreed to take her out on a secret date to Waffle House. But as it turns out, the date was a trap. The princess and her royal wizards wanted his bounty. They tried a capture spell on PC, but the spell malfunctioned and it turned him into a stubby cat dog creature. He escaped and immediately went into hiding. So let me get this straight. This dude scored a first date, got double crossed, and became a wanted criminal overnight. Good lord. No wonder he's so emotionally closed off. Did I mention that he and his best friend ran away from their crappy home planet when he was just a boy? Throughout Lazy in Space, he learns to open up his vulnerable side to B. He feels guilty for not telling B that he's technically a wanted criminal. The alien wizards who curse his body can sense his presence when he does gigs with B. Similar to B, Puppy Cat was considered an outcast even when he was voiced by C. Bloom. Yes, that C. Bloom, aka Tom from Toonami. Get out of my beautiful face. My beautiful captain's chair. Hey there, you're watching Dragon Ball Z. However, it's the buddy dynamic between the alien and the girl where the show really shines. B is the muscle and heart of the team, while Puppy Cat is the technology and business expert. Puppy Cat has far more experience when dealing with aliens on other worlds. As such, he's B's mentor. In return, B is his guide to human culture. PC is enamored with B's neighbors and their food. He is a hungry dog cat, like his name suggests after all. They start out as strictly business buddies, but grow to hold each other as equal partners. It's a fun dynamic that contributes to that more laid back atmosphere. If I were to describe the tone of Lazy in Space, it would be a whimsical comedy. It contains absurd comedy bits, some exciting action, and a whole lot of memorable alien encounters. Lazy in Space is unique in its methodical pacing. A lot of modern anime shows are written like snappy TikTok videos. Every once in a while, I need something that doesn't overwhelm my senses. Lazy in Space offers a relaxing vibe, but it's never boring. The writing is cute, and the variety of mundane scenarios just add to that otherworldly feeling. Heck, the show is bursting with many burning questions. Where did Puppy Cat come from? Why is there abandoned alien tech in B's hometown? Why is her landlord a 7 year old boy? A normal show would give a few key answers by the season finale. Lazy in Space goes an entirely different route. Puppy Cat provides a lot of fragments to the picture, but how you put it together is up to you. For example, why is B a cyborg? She mentions that she was sick at a young age, and her engineer dad did everything he could to save her. We don't know why he went missing afterward, or how B kept that secret for so long. All we know is that her programming is quite limited, at least according to the flashbacks. 
We get hints to what happened, but it never spoils the whole picture. You have to use your imagination. I can't tell you how refreshing it is for have a series to not hold my hand. It trusts the audience to stitch the disparate pieces together. This is further helped by the excellent art direction. I'm usually not a fan of bright pastel colors, but the artists made it work. I love the contrast between the earth and space scenes. The earth portion uses more naturalistic colors. In temp space, the artists go wild. It has bright cyans, pinks, and yellows. Plus, the design of these alien planets is so rad. There are cat bathhouses, a Rainbow Road-esque racetrack, a bakery set on a donut, and so much more. But the creativity doesn't stop there. The music is great. It's ambient electronic tunes that enhance that cozy mood. The soundtrack feels like it belongs in an indie game. But Lazy in Space is more than a technical treat. It has the spirit of an early 2000s adult swim show. Lazy in Space is like Aqua Teen, but with less gore and more melancholy. Lazy in Space is not written like a traditional cable program. It's an experimental piece of art that managed to get a budget. It knows it's weird, it takes a lot of creative detours, and it doesn't always make sense. But it is unlike anything else I've seen. So let's answer the question at the top of the video. Did Lazy in Space retain the small-scale community production charm of the original series? Yes and no. Lazy in Space is technically season 2, but its first three episodes are a full reimagining of the first season. Let's discuss some of those changes. I prefer the more streamlined approach in the Netflix iteration. As much as I adored the original series, it didn't make the best use of its limited runtime. B didn't push the plot outside of the first and last episodes. There was an overall lack of urgency. Plus, there were lots of random cutaway gags that didn't add to anything. Cleavage, dude. Let's go! Uh, cleavage? Lazy in Space made the necessary improvements. The second season had the benefit of being 16 episodes, with each one being 22 minutes in length. The show was able to expand the world building, the planets, and the supporting cast. Now keep in mind, the original iteration, which is on YouTube, isn't really that bad. It's basically a bunch of 10 minute internet shorts that were just loosely strung together. And that is a fine format, but it was clear it had a lot of room for improvement. The biggest improvement comes to Deckard's side plot. He gets an official invite to the cooking school of his dreams, but he fears he'll flunk in humiliation. B convinces Deckard that it's better to try and fail rather than not try at all. In season one, the Deckard subplot is mentioned is dropped for most segments and then comes up again at the last minute. But the resolution felt a little flat. We don't spend enough time to know Deckard or his previous interactions with B. In season two, this subplot flows way better. The story beats are the same, but the context is more fleshed out. Moreover, we get to see the aftermath of Deckard's change of heart. So in the middle of the season, we get scenes of Deckard and B calling each other on the phone. Deckard is struggling with his grades at college, and B misses his presence greatly. This subplot became way more impactful when we saw B actually working towards her goal. In the original series, B just kind of stood back as Puppy Cat made all the critical decisions. She was like, Oh, I want to see Pretty Patrick, but our TV is down, so let's go to the cat planet. Uh, Deckard is uh, he's calling quits, uh, better cry at him. She didn't do much more than that. In Lazy in Space, she drives the plot forward. She goes out of her way to pay off her ex-boss's rent. Dink, she, she's a good friend. When your character has a strong internal motivation, it makes your arc way more believable. Although, Lazy in Space did gloss over my favorite segment. So in one episode in the original series, the Team B visits Cloud World. It was an MMO world where B did all the side quests instead of doing the main quest. Okay, I know why they cut it. It was filler. However, it had some of the best comedy in the franchise, like changing your name to something vulgar. And what is your sidekick called? Barf! A true heroic name. Okay, let's finish this up. Being Puppycat, Lazy in Space is full of so much charm. 
The art direction, the music, and the chemistry between its main characters are all splendid. It manages to retain that small-scale indie spirit from its YouTube run while expanding the characters and the world. Even with all the amazing animation content out there, I haven't seen anything like Bird and K9 Feline. It's a rather mesmerizing and transcendental experience. If you liked the first season on YouTube, you'll most likely enjoy Lazy in Space on Netflix. God, I hope we get a third season one day. Fingers crossed. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this birthday present. Remember, no cats or dogs were harmed in the making of this video.